You're listening to the Inquisitive Red Podcast, the show that brings you philosophical ponderings of your life from a bird's eye view. Now, here's your host, Shah. Sierra, <laughs> it's so lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for doing this. Oh my God, uh, it's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. I want to start out by asking about uh because I felt so much when I ask you about but meditation to start with if that's all right yeah. can you remember the first time you started to get into was it meditation or was it relaxation visualization what can you remember the first time you started meditating yes the first time I started to meditating was when I was actually in I think it was a high school because one of my math teachers he was actually into meditation so in one class he was just teaching everybody to like sit quietly close our eyes and kind of like kind of like breathe and count the breath so that was actually the first time that I kind of have a little taste of it and that was so interesting but I didn't really think much about it of course I was too young to understand everything and then um Another time, probably the first time that I had a proper meditation as an adult was when I was 20-something, went to a meditation class in my campus. And the class was actually run by the Sri Chinmoy Meditation Center. I'm not sure if you heard of them or Sri Chinmoy, but later on I became disciple and that is the whole thing that it started <laughs> right I want to talk yeah, yeah. To you about that actually because I've read I've read your blog I've read everything now <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> so, you, so you you've had a very interesting journey which I want to ask about so that's oh, interesting I love that for maths class because I certainly struggled with maths um, and I think if I'd had meditation it would have helped so yeah. I think that was brilliant of your teacher as well. Yeah, it was interesting. Excellent stuff. We yeah. need more of that. I never that. thought about that. Yeah, I never thought about it seriously until later on when I was a lot older and experiencing like how mental health is so important and you know, it affects every single aspect of life. And I realized that oh, he's brilliant. <laughs> Even he just introduced only one time of that. <laughs> yeah. That was brilliant. Yeah. We need yeah. more of that, I think, at school because it will yeah. relax you. And the more you relax, the easier it is to learn, really, because we feel That's this right. pressure to, to get it right. Um, yeah. Now, reading your blog, and you've, you've, you've been very, very open, very uh, honest, transparent about your journey and, you know, some of the inroads that you've taken. And I like to look at those on this podcast because I like to look at people's journeys, really, especially mm -hmm. once they've come through it, because I always think we can look at it from a bird's eye view. You know, we can look down and go, oh, yes, OK, I did that. <laughs> and, and this is how it helped me. So yeah. um, I know that you've had an interesting experience finding your path, your spiritual path. And mm -hmm. I wonder if you might tell us a bit about about that yeah so um that was started when i was in um university actually doing my master of architecture and that was um that was the reason i moved to new zealand to actually do my degree and thought that i would go home after that but then i stayed because i joined this spiritual path and it's become my whole life you know so i felt like oh my god you've been in my home now this is my life now so I say until now. Um, yeah, so it all started from that first class of meditation in my campus and found out about the teaching my meditation center and I realized that oh, I really like this meditation thing. It's not only it's not only the fact that I was my thesis, but my thesis was something to do with like kind of like design a future workspace that help people reach their um, happiness at work. So that was the that was the reason behind why I going to the main class. But then after that, I was hooked because of the teaching of my guru, Peter Moy, and I decided to join the path, became his disciple for 
probably three years. And uh, the thing is, um, I was into it when I was early 20s. I didn't have a lot of life experience yet. So I kind of took it for granted for a while, for that three years. And um, yeah, I, yeah, so just life evolved and people changed and things changed. And then I realized later on that it wasn't something that I can say for a long time. So I left the past. It was another story, a like life-changing story, but it's all really good and beautiful experience, actually. And uh, yeah, now I'm here, not belonging to any spiritual group anymore, but I'm still on my own path. And yeah, just really excited to see what life's going to unfold for me. <laughs> yes. You see, yeah. I that's so important to know that, you know, along your journey, you joined a group of people, like-minded people at the time, yeah, correct. where yeah. you were all on the same path, but then you you were led elsewhere. So mm. was it a feeling you got? Was it a dream you had? Was it a book you read? What made you know that, okay, I've, I've gone as far as I can go with this? I've gotten wonderful mm. things from this. Now it's time for me to move on. Yeah, that's right. That's a beautiful question. I love that question. Thank you. Um, so when I was in the future path, I was young and inexperienced. So I love to learn meditation. I want to make it an essential part of my life because I was so happy. And I realized that inner happiness is something that comes within. And you don't need to have a partner to be happy. We need to have family or children to be happy. We don't need any of that at all. Actually, it's from within. So I love that part. But also the path that I was on, that spiritual group, had a lot of rules and um, just really uh, proper. So it's like we have to become vegetarian. We need to quit uh, alcohol. I never, I was never a drink anyway, so that was easy. And also we have to practice celibacy, yeah. which is having yeah, like a yeah, like a man, a man. yeah. So I was okay with all of that, actually. I was happy to do that. But also, the thing about me was that I was too inexperienced in life. So I didn't understand how important it is to uh, also practicing self-love yeah. and kind of like having boundaries. Because boundaries doesn't mean that we're shutting down from anything, but it means that we actually putting ourselves, our inner happiness, our wellness first, before we can serve the world, that that way it comes from, like how we can serve the world when we have energy, when we fully charge, right? I didn't really understand that. I was like, I was saying yes to so many things. I was doing too much, and obviously I burned out, and I was just completely shut down. And I had, I think I had a mild depression. I wouldn't understand what depression was back then, but then now looking back, I can see that it was a mild depression. Even I was meditating every day. I was doing things that is being very healthy, you know, but just purely from saying yes to so many things and putting myself last is putting me to that position where I have to actually uh, leave the path. Yeah, so that's how it started. Yeah. <laughs> it's accumulated over years. <laughs> yes, but I mean, there's some real gems in what you just talked about, really. You mentioned the issue of self-love. And mm. also the really big issue of boundaries. And it's yeah. something I often talk about as well. Boundaries doesn't mean shutting people out or being strict. Or Boundaries, as you explain, is a protection mm. of yourself. It's self-love. It's mm, being able right. to, yes, it's being, so I love that. I love that, what you said, because it enables you to create a safe space for yourself in order to grow. And as you say, you know, we're all inexperienced when we first start to we're, we, we only become experienced when we know something, <laughs> you know, and we've done mm -hmm. something. So as you say, you were inexperienced, which we all are when we first start out on any path of enlightenment, I think. And then mm -hmm. you learned and you felt that, you know, all these vows as such, I, I call them vows, but uh, promises, whatever word we would use, um, celibacy, vegetarianism, all those things are wonderful for a lot of people and they can live like mm. that, but it's not yeah. for everyone. And sometimes it's for you for a short period of time. 
maybe that's what you needed to then find your way, you know, not being distracted by all that stuff. Um, I love that, though, how you explained it to you, because it really does open us up to understanding how we Mm -hmm. get there. So many people say, well, how do I be how do I learn this? How, which brings me to your yoga as well. So a lot of people, um, I don't know if you notice or what your thoughts on this. I yeah. think yoga has become a little bit of a trend. You know, it's all people just want to, you want to, everybody wants to do a downward dog and everybody wants to post themselves doing a downward or sun salutation. You know, everybody <laughs> wants to show the world that they are posing and that they're doing yoga when the practice because it is a practice of yoga is personal it's a personal practice isn't it and it's nice to have pictures it's lovely because i i believe it inspires others when we see pictures of people i believe it's okay so in no way i'm saying that's not a good thing i think it is but i think it's become this trend that people, so my experience has been a lot of people don't change the mind. They only look at changing the body. So they may do Pilates or yoga, but the mind, the thoughts are still in the past. They're still negative or they're still hurtful. So I think no matter how many downward dogs you do, if you don't look at what's going on in your mind, no amount of downward dogs is going to change your life. But that's my view. What, what's your thought? How did you get started in yoga? Another beautiful question, Sha. I love all the questions. That's so good. Uh, yeah, I, I quite agree with that. Actually. Um, and the thing is, because I also was that kind of people before I was into yoga. I first um, come across yoga because of the physical part of it, of how flexibly you can become, how tone your body is going to become, you know, beautiful, because that is very attractive. So I got into that because of that as well. But um, yeah, so that is kind of like a motivation start. So it's not all bad. But then there'll be, there'll be a lot more about yoga than just the physical aspect and if we can get to understand all of that it would be so powerful to use in our daily life and to do life better that's it that is the whole purpose of it and to realize the connection of the body mind and soul to have like um, the connection with the highest our, our higher self and, and tap into that infinite power that we all have and that is actually the meaning of yoga as well as in England. Yeah. So I felt like if we only uh, focus on the physical side, the asana, we will look beautiful outside. We'll be fit and stuff like that. But we'll miss out on a lot of things as well. And yeah, and I feel like we definitely should look at more of the other aspects of yoga. Um, yeah. I, um, yeah, I, I first realized that yoga is not only the physical part. Um, it's when I joined my guru spiritual, guru spiritual more path because our path is actually bhakti yoga, devotional yoga. So it's also yoga, but it's not about the physical. It's fully about meditation. Meditate on the heart center to, um, yeah, to connect with your infinite love, infinite power. So that is a different part of yoga. That's why I was like, wow, so yoga is actually a lot more than just asana then. And then I still can keep continuing doing yoga for being for staying active and keeping a certain level of fitness. But I feel like the thing that drives me to my mat, to show up on my, on my mat, is actually my discipline and my strong will, which is not very sustainable. And... Not only, not only until I found this Ashtanga yoga practice that, yeah. I was going to ask you like, about Ashtanga. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. That I felt like, oh, it's actually definitely my thing now because now what keeps me showing up on my mat regularly is my inner joy and happiness, passion. 
the practice is quite interesting. It's quite unique in a way that is um it's really a practice that not only the physical part of the body but every breath will have to connect to a with a with a move with a movement. So I like that about the practice. And the other thing about the practice is that we're just going to practice on one sequence every time. So when I tell people about Ashtanga Yoga, they'll be like, oh my God, that's so boring. You're doing every, the same thing every day. It's so boring. But the beauty of that is you see yourself making improvement every single time. And then you know you're the pose better. You focus on your breathing. And that will help you go quite far. Not only just the physical path, but it's like a meditative movement you know so uh, yeah so that is the ashtanga yoga practice in particular that i feel like it it really uh, resonate with me that i want to share yes of course of course any yeah of course any other different kind of yoga can help you to that but if you're not willing to go deep into understanding the practice not just about the cool looking pose then you wouldn't get all these amazing um, uh, understanding and benefits outside of just the physical yoga yes beautifully explained and beautifully said as well but yes Mm -hmm. it's that mind-body connection but that focus on the breath and Mm -hmm. I like what you were saying about the breath but also that's what takes you to your mat that that's what gets you on your mat the the idea that you're going to benefit from mind body soul from your practice there will be a benefit from that it's not just about the pose or the the being toned it's the entire benefit i suppose that you get from doing it daily never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now thank you for your support you make this podcast possible now back to the show and so do you practice daily or every three times a day twice a day I'm going to different places just like everybody else, I guess. Yeah. I, there was a certain time that I do five days a week. Mm-hmm. So that, that was fun and intensive. And yeah, it, I got a lot out of it. Yeah. But then there was time that my priorities will be more a bit on yeah. my work when I have a lot more things and deadlines and stuff like that. Then yeah. it will be really, really, really even only once a week or like twice a week, three times a week. So it all depends. It's, it's personal. It depends on your schedule and because oh well, you want to stress yourself out, so yeah, I feel like that to me as well. But I I do try to practice regularly enough because it is fun and and um yeah, it's just like meditation. So I for meditation I do every single day. Mm-hmm. Yes. It's, yeah, but for yoga because I have to travel to yoga studio, so a bit a bit less. I try to be regular enough. So. I don't feel disconnected to my practice. Yes, absolutely. Because once you start it, it becomes a spiritual, um, it's, it, I, I find it's spiritually, for me, I miss it when I don't do it. Uh, but I was saying right. to somebody the other day, sometimes I miss a day and then I feel it. I, I mm-hmm. feel that I've missed a day. Uh, because maybe I'm a bit more stressed or something gets to me a bit more when normally it wouldn't. So the benefits far outweigh any idea Uh, of not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that is the connection between the body and the mind. So when it comes to yoga, I feel like every single practice is different because it has to base on the condition of your body. Sometimes you have some soreness elsewhere. You know, so your practice will have to kind of like um, depend on that condition of your body. That's why you realize a lot of things going on in your body. That's the connection that I felt mm. instantly with my body. And that is the fun part about it as well. And that is also the fun part of doing a same sequence every day because you see it so clear. Yeah, that's a good point. Same sequence every day. Exactly, because you're used to it. Then you know your body. You know what's what to expect. And when something's out of sync, you know. So, yeah, very good Definitely. point. Very good point. Yeah. Um, so I, I found this quote, which I love. Uh, I never heard of this guy before. He's called Rolf Gates. 
never heard of him, but he said, yoga is not a workout. It's a work in. And I love that because it is a work within, isn't it? Yoga. Um, yes, we work the outer body, but it's a work in. We feel it. And especially at the, for me, at the end, um, there, that it's, there's that internal feeling of peace. But also I feel accomplishment for me because I've done my practice. So oh, that's satisfying. Cool somehow what about you yes i totally agree it's definitely the work in more than a workout yes <laughs> for me for me yeah Unless... someday i just don't feel like doing anything exactly. just don't feel like showing up on the mat at all but the thing is yoga doesn't mean that you have to do a headband you can just sit down and do some stretching you know that's also yoga you just connect with your breath and be present on the mat that's also yoga yeah, so, good point. Yeah. It's that's in, such an excellent point. Just a few moves and you're done. Um, yeah, as I, long as you do something, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> so it's interesting because I see philosophy as like a really thinking thing, you know. And when I mm. look at your creativity and when I look at some of your art, I was thinking. So I wonder if you're thinking as you're creating. So what's happening? Just shifting a little bit from the yoga and the meditation, because I wonder if when you're creating, your creativity is fueled by some type of meditation. What's your creative process? What's happening when you're painting, drawing? What's oh, happening? That beautiful question. Yeah, so I felt like my creative process are not the same always. They are sometimes different. Um, so I do have experience of like I have ideas that stuff on my uh, in my dream, and then the next day I was just like execute on it. it. It's quite interesting. Yeah, but it also came from the all the books that I read and all the videos, the tutorials that I watched, and all the references that I've looked at. So that is part of that as well. And the fact that um, I always show up to do my work because I believe that there's no such thing as creative block. I, I don't think that it exists actually. Just just show up. Sometimes I don't feel like drawing particularly. But when I to pick up my pen, pencil and started to draw, it just come out naturally. And when and that when I get in a zone of like doing uh, of drawing creative um creating and it's just meditative to me as well yeah interesting so, so yeah. there's no creative so, block you don't believe i love I, that I don't, I don't think that i don't think so yeah 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 i love that because i suppose it will flow as you say you pick up a pen or or, or yeah. brush and something comes out exactly exactly the thing about creative block or sometimes other people call the writer block similar thing for, for writers is that because they don't they don't want to put down any drawing or any writing because of fear fear of what, what it's gonna be you know what if i make something that is not good enough you know but the thing is the first draft will never be good anyway and that's okay sometimes we have to make like thousands of drafts until we have something that is presentable and that is part of it so I feel like there's I feel like I don't have any creative block because I don't want myself I don't want to stop myself from drawing something say like, actually to you, like a thousand times until I can do something that is good enough. Amazing. Yeah. Do you know you've opened my mind now to that? I had not oh. thought about that before. <laughs> so I love that and I I agree. I'm with you there. I believe it, we know about fear. I mean, I write and we know if anything's published or be, yes, there is an inherent fear that it's not good enough or it won't be good enough or mm -hmm. absolutely the same with a, somebody who sculpts or draws or paints. Exactly that. I agree. Yeah. So you've opened my mind to that. 
There's so many books oh, out there. Okay. How to get over creative block, you know, how to get over writer's block, how to get over. I agree. Absolutely. Whatever comes out was meant to come out. Yeah, that's right. That's correct. You don't you don't let that come out and it's a block. Yeah. But the thing is, the thing is your fear is actually the biggest mm. block. Mm. You fear of people looking at something that is not good enough. Or, you know, the fear of making something that is not just not good in general. Mm. So that's stopping you from doing the thing, the practice. Yes. So one day you will get there, you will get to where you want to be. Yeah. That yeah. is, wow, <laughs> that's big. That's huge. I'm already thinking about typing that out to put on your uh, promo. <laughs> that is very good. I love that. I've not heard anybody talk about that before. So, and I, I agree 100%. Um, yeah. Ah, now the Dao Te Ching, that's right. I remember jotting this down. No, it, I, I, I like this quote only because when we talk about yoga, when we talk about creativity and things like that, do you think creativity is learned or are we born with it? Mm, interesting question again. I do think that creativity is learned. We, we can all learn to be creative. Oh, well, actually, no, I, I, I think that actually interesting. I I thought that talent is not is not born with like we can we can always practice and be practice. I do think that we all have creativity. So no, yeah, that's the answer. So we all have creativity. Right. We all have inside us. It's just the um it's just that do we willing to act it out or not? Right. Right. Yeah. Okay, I get you. Because you know, when we think about people like Mozart or mm -hmm. you know, Einstein you know geniuses yeah. who were young prodigies when especially Mozart who never had a lesson or anything mm. uh, he had to be born with that right but then again we have kids who go to music school or whatever and they do learn they can mm. learn to be better and they do become extraordinaires so maybe it's a bit of both, yeah. I think that's right, that's right. Mm. Yeah, like, I don't believe that we all have that sort of creativity yeah. inside us. And now with the school, schooling and yeah. the teaching from teacher or tutor, it's like they're giving us tools so we can use to, to kind of evoke yeah. that creativity that we all have, already have inside. Yeah, absolutely. So a, bit of, a bit of both. That, that's correct yeah. yes no but that's <laughs> a good point as well because maybe some of it lies dormant you know it's not it hasn't come up to the fore yet for mm. me when I was very young I could communicate with spirit you know I had this thing but it wasn't until I got a little bit older that it became very clear what I was hearing so I think it's right I think that lay dormant in me for a bit and then as I got older, I could clearly hear spirits speaking to me. So, yes, and I, I, I think that's a form of creativity. I don't know why, but I think it is. Oh, that's beautiful. Sierra, have you ever had to sort of just fly above something? You know, we, we all, I think life is about inroads and taking curves and sharp turns and things flying out of the blue and things, you know. So we've all had challenges. Does anything come to mind for you where you've had to really fly above it? Yeah, so, yeah I think, of course, I have a lot of challenges and things like that. But I feel like it gets easier when I kind of like accept it the way it is. Mm -hmm. And I, the only thing I can control and change is myself. Yes. I can't really change or control anything outside of me. Right. So when I, you know, have that kind of awareness and accept that kind of surrender to the outcome then it, it gets easier <laughs> that's a yeah. very good point excellent point because that is flying above maybe looking mm. at why you're affected by it absolutely it's yeah because yeah. you can you can't change them you can only change yourself yeah exactly yeah good point now you were very kind to send me one of your coloring in books and oh, you're welcome. I 
and I absolutely love it. It's a yoga book and I've been using it. It is brilliant. It's so beautiful. Um, I'm going to put the links, listeners. I'm going to put all the links to Sierra's website, to her Etsy store, everything in the show notes below. Um, I often suggest to my psychotherapy and counseling clients to do coloring in. I've suggested it for years and I've been practicing for 20 plus years. I've always asked them, I used to bring coloring in books to my art therapy groups to give to people to do. I think coloring in is such an anxiety reliever, Mm -hmm. especially for people who suffer from ruminating thoughts, thoughts that go round and round and round and round, negative thoughts. Um, Mm -hmm. And I think what it does, it doesn't get rid of the thoughts, but I think what I have found with people doing coloring in is when they're focused on coloring in, somehow the thoughts become more organized. So Mm -hmm. they're not rushing around, free floating, you know, everybody's bad, everybody's horrible, everybody hates me, all that negative stuff. It becomes a little bit less because you're not just left doing nothing but thinking. So I absolutely would recommend anyone listening to this podcast to have a look at Sierra's coloring in books. They are brilliant. You will love them, not just if you love yoga, but she's got lots of different art on her site as well. Um, I love your astrology, uh, what you offer in terms of astrology and also the magical mystical stuff as well beautiful stuff the tarot which I want to ask you about because I know you've got a deck coming out but I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that I'm jumping ahead but Mm -hmm. what made you start to literally create and draw coloring in pages and books yeah so the thing that got me in it is because I love coloring myself I I just love the practice as well. I'm really addicted to coloring, actually. And I've been watching so many YouTube channels, uh, big channels, on teaching people on uh, coloring, actually. It's really, really beautiful. And you could do a lot with it. And you don't have to have any art skills to start with at all. But just starting to to color in, and then you will just learn new techniques over time. So that is so much fun. And the, and just like you say about it helps with uh, negative thoughts and it makes you feel more calmer and you know in a better state. So then you have a kind of like clear mind to to understand the situation better and not reacting to the situation anymore. Yeah. So that is yeah. That's I I found the the beneficial of it as well. And um, and the thing is sometimes when I'm not in a good state. Doing meditation is, is not is not as easy, of course. Exactly. Because yeah, but instead I can start with coloring. So I, I have different tools now to use either yoga, meditation, or coloring in. So that is one of the tools now. So I can you know coloring in something, and maybe fifteen minutes later I feel really good, and I see I see the negative situation in a different eye, different totally different view, just because I'm in a better state now easier for me to understand and accepting and surrendering or like feeling a lot more grateful to what I have instead of like just only looking at the negative side of a thing. So that is the beautiful side of it that brought me so like, oh, now I want to create coloring books because, yeah, I like yoga. I like creating artworks on yoga and spiritual practice. So why not making it a coloring book as well? So the yoga coloring book that I sent to you was my first one that I ever created. Oh. Be- before that, I was just created one piece of, of this, and one page of that. You know, never really a whole book like that. Um, yeah. So there will be a lot more to kind of improve myself in terms of how I design it better for people. This this yoga coloring book is a little more. Like maybe for adults mm-hmm. because it it had a lot more details that you can't really finish one in one day. Yeah. It, it could be like several days if you want yeah. to finish the whole thing. Yeah. 
But in the future, like, I do want to create something like for a maybe a really like absolute beginner as well. Something maybe can just be a 15 minutes of practice of coloring a affirmation card, a small one. And then you can put in your wallet or you can like, put it up on your wall or something. Just a little fun and reminder and also a bit of like uh, art to remind yourself that you can be creative as well. You an artist yourself, you know. <laughs> that's, so a, that's what I want to do. I want to offer to, to people. Excellent. That is a brilliant idea, actually. You've got to do that. The little cards. That would be brilliant. Yeah. Oh, thank you. You've got to do yeah. that. By the way, uh, listeners, you Sierra does offer uh like samples on her website so if you're not sure you just want to give it a try she you can get some of the pages for free just to try them yeah, out see right. what you think see what you like go to her website they're all on there well she's got under the freebies tab it's brilliant so just try them out see what you think if you've never done coloring in before this will be a good chance to just try it out but i guarantee you know, it will relax you, which brings me to the, you know, color. You love color. Everything about your Instagram, your your visuals, your art is full of vibrancy, color. Uh, animation is so wow, like that. You know, I really connect with color. So, um, and then sometimes I, you know, white is a color. Sometimes I just like to wear white because that color is so calming, pure. But I love the color. You, you just love color. So what resonates with you about color? And the reason I'm asking is there's this um, trend at the moment, and I have to say I'm on it, about neutrals. People just, especially mm. planning, people like neutrals, neutrals. My sort of inquisitive wren is a bit neutral, but it's because it's about a bird. <laughs> so mm -hmm. a little bit. But what is it about color that resonates with you? So um, actually, a couple of years ago, when I first started my Instagram, um, probably you have to scroll down on the like very, very bottom of the, some of the beginning posts. It wasn't colorful at all. It was just black and white. Because that was what I was comfortable with. Yeah. And then I added yellow in it. So it was just uh, black and yellow and white. <laughs> because I was so not um, kind of like bold enough to experience color. I came from a background of um, studying architecture. So wasn't really doing fine art or anything. Yes. I'm very comfortable with uh, drawing line art, line and, and shape and stuff like that. But not really color. And I, I was considering it was my weakness, and I tried to avoid colors. Just when I started to do a sangha yoga, you know, something shifted, something changed, I suddenly felt like I want to be at adventures, and I want to make mistakes, and I want to show myself to the world, you know. I want to do a whole bunch of experiments and stuff like that. So I started to uh, just adding a lot more colors into my pieces. And that's what I realized, that there's no such thing as creative block, because the first one could be not as good. The combination of color would be not really good. And then I can change it. I can keep redo it, redo it until I feel it's like good enough that I can sell on my Etsy. So that's how it started. And the practice, it becomes something that is more natural to me that I can oh. keep adding more colors into my pieces. Yeah. And I look at colors um, on from the seven chakras as well. It's so vibrant, seven different colors. And I just yeah. use all of them. Um, I do notice the trend of just like neutral color. They are beautiful. Like yeah. um, they fit really well with like some minimum minimalist decor. Or, That's it. Uh, bo boho decor, you know. Yes. And it's yes. become a big trend. Big trend Huge. right now. Mm -hmm. Something to a uh, woman will see them as classy, as you know. Yeah. And um, but I don't. I don't really want to just limit myself to just one, one, one type like that then my whole Instagram feed will be only neutral. Right. I want to be able to be uh, 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 exclusive, to be uh, adventurous, to do whatever colors I like. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. That, that's why I, I try not to just limit myself to one size. 
Podcasting can be a minefield when you're first starting out, so it was really important that I find the right partners. The team at Buzzsprout is passionate about helping you succeed. Join over 100,000 podcasters already using Buzzsprout to get their message out to the world. Follow the link in the show notes to let Buzzsprout know that I sent you and you'll get a free Amazon gift card if you sign up for a paid plan. You also support the show. Now, back to the show. Yeah. Even even I do I do still do a lot of line art, which is very basic background and mainly focus on, focus on the line. And yeah, but um, I think that's why I have also two Instagram yeah, account yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I do want to do everything together. I don't want to leave it myself just one thing. Yes. Yeah, that's important, isn't it? Uh but you know, just going about the architecture part, um yeah. you because that's your background. So are you is that sort of something you do on the side or would you ever work in architecture? I mean, what what are your thoughts about that? Because that that mm. wouldn't have been easy for you to do at school. Um, yeah. Yeah, all that hard work. Yeah. So, Yes, I did architecture. I did my study for a solid seven years, yeah. including my Master of Architecture degree. Yeah. So it was a long, long yes. time. Yes, yes. And I enjoyed it very much. It, it was the start of my whole art career, actually. Mm. Everything I learned, my skill is from my architecture. Wow. Um, and I did practice in an architectural firm for a short time, and I was doing interior design oh. until 2020. Until 2020, and then after that, I went on to illustration full time. I quit the job, oh. and um, sometimes I think that oh, I wish I started doing art full time earlier, but at the time, I understand that it probably was really necessary for me mm-hmm. for my whole be, um involvement for my whole career to yeah. be involved to this uh, to to now to where I am now. I have to go yeah. through all of that. So now I don't have much of the regret for doing such a hard thing and studying architecture for so long and yeah. didn't know it hard at all. I felt grateful for that part of my life. It was difficult. It was stressful. It was a stressful job. That's yeah. why don't want to do it for too long and it wasn't something that I felt like I had a purpose for myself anyway it doesn't relate with me anymore mm. now I felt now I know that my purpose is to create more spiritual art that help people with their spiritual practices mm. yeah <laughs> but that is certainly your one of your skills architecture so and that yeah. you know as you say you studied and you know you have a master's I mean it's fantastic but I think it's a good example of how we have different purposes in life I believe different mm-hmm. life purposes yeah. that was one of yours and somehow it's incorporated in your art the way That's you right. yeah That's the right. way you draw and how you form images and everything That's correct. That's correct. I, I do believe that job is not who we are. Like what we do is not really who we are, not our identity. And the thing is, our identity is not something that fits in a jar, in a box. You know, it's it's a flowy thing, and and sometimes we not to, to get to get out of it to grow. Definitely. And every, every time growth happens, it's really uncomfortable. Yeah. But it's it's a signal when you know that you actually growing. And every time it happens, you pick a pieces of that with you as part of your journey mm-hmm. so and I'm really grateful for all of the experience that I have in my whole life either being a uh, um, architecture student interior designer or a nun or whatever I did in the past is contribute to, to my journey and, and help me to get to where I am today and even in the future I don't know where I'm gonna be I might have I do something else but that's okay totally fine for me as well and I'm excited for anything that unfolds. Exactly and you know even as you speak about it the, your energy is just open to receive whatever comes so. If anyone has some spare time to read it's it, yeah just start because you never know you learn so much from books. 
like I do. I learn so much from books than anything else. So I should read books and then podcast is the two things that help me learn so much. Yes. Anything to do with my work, with art, with my set, with mental health. <laughs> yeah, so, books and podcasts. Uh, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Which brings me to your podcast, actually, because you have a podcast of your own. I've listened to it. You are brilliant with the meditation. So tell us a bit about your your podcast. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, my podcast, I started it last year when we went in a lockdown for three, four months here in New Zealand. And at the beginning, it was just something personal as a practice for my throat chakra because I I know that even I love public speaking, I love speaking and I don't really uh, articulate my words, I don't really practice it as much. So I thought, oh, I thought of a, a project that I could do is actually starting a post post That way I have to write, I have to read, I have to practice and record it. So it becomes the practicing for my own um, thought chakra balancing. Brilliant idea. So with that in mind, uh, and then later on, I realized that I don't want to serve people in a way that's providing them a platform or something. Like if they want to learn about meditation or chakras and stuff like that, then or the, if they want to get to know me or if I, anything, it's like a connection. Uh, I want to build for my own brain with the audience, so I'm building it up. My podcast is very uh, small, though. And I don't think many people know about it yet. Only some people that like like uh, my Instagram followers or my SD buyers, they, they do listen to it, and some of them are so kind that give me really good feedback. And you're so kind, you listen to it, and and yeah, and tell me what you think. So I'm so I so love grateful. it. Thank you, Jack. I do yeah. love it. And I would suggest to anyone, even if you've not meditated before, this would be a good way to kind of, you know, you listen to Sierra and sort of get an idea of what it's like to quiet in your mind a bit. I think if you listen to a few episodes, you you will hear and feel what it's like. And that might help to lead you into doing a bit of meditation, relaxation, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. So the link to Sierra's podcast will be in the show notes. Um, but yeah, it, I love the fact that you were, uh, because a lot of things started in lockdown for people. <laughs> yeah, I started this YouTube channel. Yeah, that started a podcast. We yes. all started something in lockdown, I think. Um, and <laughs> I love that you started it to open up your throat chakra as well. It's wonderful. Um, so picture this, uh, you're standing in a stadium <laughs> full of about maybe 20,000 people. What would you like them to say to you all at once? All at once. What one? All at mm-hmm. once. Yeah. What would you like to hear from about 20,000 people? Usually the, the word, the sound that, jump out of my mind right now is OM. Like if imagine twenty thousand people chanting at the same time. Beautiful. Oh my God. Beautiful. That That (laughs) is stunning. Absolutely. Yes, imagine that. I wonder if it's been done before. I'm sure Yeah. I think so. Wow. Yes, just the thought of that, that energy and feeling. Now, if you could live in any decade, it could be past, present, future, anything stand out for you? Any decade in particular? I'm pretty happy right now. Yeah. Because I, I do feel like, um, yeah, we, we actually are the pretty good, like, even with the old COVID and everything happened, but looking back at human history, a lot more have been improved so much that sometimes we forget, like, silence actually have been input so much now in the past. Yeah. So I feel like this is a good place. Yeah. I'm not complaining even with the situation of Omicron now <laughs> going on in the world. But, yeah. I know. 
Good point, though. You're right, because in the past, you know, it's a bit romantic to think about Paris in the 20s and all that. But there was so much disease and death. And you're right. I mean, we're in a better space overall. Um, that's true, that's true. In terms yeah. of saving lives, our way of thinking, there was so much. <laughs> but I know we all tend to kind of, well, not all, but a lot of people fantasize about, oh, I wish I lived mm. in the ninth, you know, the 1600s. Well, right. it's, it's nice to fantasize. If, yeah. if, I, if I fantasize, I would think about probably the, um, uh, I, I like, um, kind of like European history a little bit. I don't know much about it, but. Yeah, watching movie and stuff, and all the costumes are like so beautiful. I would love to wear one of those, you know. <laughs> yes. So that that would be my fantasy. Yeah. Yeah, they fantasy. are beautiful, aren't they? I'm watching yeah. um something called the mid called the midwife. I don't know if you have called the midwife. It's a Netflix series, and it's about okay. childbirth <laughs> in England uh, at the turn of the century. Well, actually, no, later. What am I talking about? It was 1950s. It feels very old, but um, because England was not very progressive then at all. For me, it's shocking to see some of the conditions in the 1950s. But um, yeah, it's very interesting. Anyway. Okay, I'll, I'll take note and, and have a look. <laughs> yes, thank you. So in uh, juxtaposition to your yoga, you run. You're, you're, yeah. you're a runner. You love long distance run. Or, well, you've run, uh, was it 5K you did? Or you did um, 50 kilometer, that's it. You, yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. How does that, because there's yoga, which is, you know, it's not relaxing as such. You, you're really stretching and moving. And then you've got that running. How does that that is that a nice combination for you? I think I think it's pretty good combination. Yeah, I uh, I got into running really seriously before I got into uh, Ashtanga yoga. Oh, uh, it's the same period when I was in my spiritual spiritual path with Spiritual yeah. Moy because Spiritual Moy is also an ultra runner. Oh, it was like, promoting all that culture and it's a it's a spiritual practice or his all his disciples. Mm -hmm. So we all run long, long distance. It's mentally challenging and what what mm -hmm. we have to after because we want to treat it as our meditation as well. And to see that our body can actually go beyond when when our mind, our soul is willing to, you know, go beyond. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's that's what a fun part about it. And running teach me a lot of things about about willing to go with the journey, with the process, and you are not expecting the outcome as much. It's, it's kind of like um, teaching me to really play for a long game rather than one, uh, one thing like uh, what do you call it? instant gratification. Yeah. That's so interesting. Ultra, yeah, ultra endurance is something that I'm still um, doing. Yeah. With that in mind. Yes, yeah, it's, all, it's all about the, yeah. It's all about the long game. It's it's not just about a print, you know, for, for me. And so that that's how I try to approach everything in my life. Wow, and that is all come from running, and of course the physical aspect. I'm fit and healthy yes, yes, thanks yes. to running, yoga, meditation. Yeah, so yeah, that's amazing. But that is so interesting. I think that will help people uh, because I think that's important about we're, we're all this world as well. It's all instant, everything, mm -hmm. instant, instant. And mm -hmm. it takes away from the actual journey of it all. And running is a journey, literally, yeah. <laughs> literally yeah. you're journeying yeah. from one space to the next at a particular speed. It's amazing. I yeah. think what you just said, it's all about the end game. And exactly. I love the idea of endurance. Somehow mm -hmm. I think that's gone by the wayside a bit, except for athletes who, mm -hmm. you know, and people who visit the gym regularly. But mm -hmm. the idea of sticking with it, endurance, building up, I think we could learn. I think it's something we can think about. 
Hmm. That's right. It's it's all about how you pace yourself. Right. So you can last longer, and you always gonna have the energy right. and finishing strong. And that philosophy I apply to a lot of things in myself hmm. in my life. Um, that got me to recently reduce my working hours a lot. Wow. Um, just because I now I realize that I want to pace myself better, so I always have energy for the next day, the next day, the next day, and always feel joyful and looking forward to things rather than burning myself out. <laughs> that is so honestly burning myself out when I'm freelancing, um, running my own visit is like, so easy. Especially, I love what I do as well, and I can just sit and draw all day. Not the healthiest thing. Yeah, so I feel that. Yeah, running good is remind me of that. Sometimes I forget them, but I'm back. Of course, you're human. <laughs> If you'd like to be a guest on the show, email me at inquire at theinquisitiverin.com. That's E-N-Q-U-I-R-E at theinquisitiverin.com. Be sure to check all social media, especially the Facebook page, for new topics and new interests. And if you're an expert in the field, I'd love to hear from you. Or if you'd just like to have a chat, contact me. Let's get you on the show. Now. Let's get back to the show. It, that is yeah. such a good point, though. Um, listeners, I want to guide you to the Inner Beauty podcast because, I first of all, I love the name Inner Beauty. And I know we've talked about the podcast, but what does Inner Beauty mean to you, Sierra? Why Inner Beauty? Mm, thank you, um, inner beauty as part of my brand name, Inner Beauty by Sierra. I believe that we all have that inner beauty and it's not, it also means inner strength, inner happiness, a lot of things, but I just choose that beauty because as women, we do really resonate with that as well. It's, um, uh, another thing is that my artworks, I mainly draw women. Um, I do, I do realize that there's so many trends that are going on lately uh, that kind of like um, mm-hmm. leading us to not a the most healthy mm-hmm. path mm-hmm. just because of like, we always looking up these big, uh, bigger influencers and want to live their lives. And our Instagram feed was just filled with beautiful women doing yoga poses or wearing neutral clothes and looking spotless, you know. And that is not life about. Of course, it's beautiful. But it's not all about being like, perfect, and you know, it's more about the journey and to realize that um, uncomfort is growth sometimes. And so the outer beauty is promoting something else that's actually just like that. So I felt like um, I felt like inner beauty would be something that I want to you know, uh, incur- uh, what do you call it? In code, in code. I'm not quite sure the word, but like I want to put in my art and uh, yeah, and using art, using inner beauty as a kind of like, like for a belief base in my artwork. Yes. What I like about everything you've said today, what I find is that there is this um, thing of balance. I find that. As you talk about the running, your creativity, your yoga, there is a balance between the mind and the body and the spirit, the soul, because you've got all of that in there. And I think inner beauty signifies that it's inner Mm -hmm. work and everything else comes outward, which the goal is that it is beauty. It is nice it is welcoming it is inviting and i think that's the energy you bring sierra very inviting lovely but i do want to read something that is just beautiful that you put on your website if you don't mind um i it just resonates so well and i think the listeners will will agree with me you said um When you have decided to stay true to who you are, showing up for yourself is being fully present on the path you have chosen. 
as no approval from anyone is needed for you to be on your path. Only your true inner calling, inner beauty, inner calling is your best navigator. Let your story be written with simply the truth of your heart and soul. I think that is beautiful. And it's one of the reasons that prompted me to ask you about writing. You know, I asked you if you would write a book about your travels, but I wondered if you, you know, writing like that just flowed from you. And that was just a blog that you posted. So uh, I say just, I mean, it was a blog. It wasn't a full book. So will you be putting any words to get I mean you may not I mean books aren't for everybody to write but what are your thoughts about maybe jotting down some things just allowing them to flow out or have you already done that thanks I love that when you read it and I hear from somebody reading it it sounds so different (laughs) and I I love how your words though so beautifully so beautifully thank you and uh yeah I wrote that one probably two three years ago, and I kind of like forgot that, wrote that. when you read it. I was like, "Wow, actually, I did, I did write that." And I remember when I wrote that. That it's just a couple of sentences that uh, took me all day to, to write. So I started in the morning. I just write a whole big paragraph, and then kind of like doing a lot of drafting, and finally came down to that uh, a little piece of writing. Before that, I never thought that I could write because I'm not an English, uh, native English speaker. English is not my first language at all. And I have um, I have struggled with grammar, with uh, a lot of things in my writing. But that proved me that write a blog is, is something that I, I don't believe that, mm-hmm. that we should believe that we, we have it. I, I don't know. I and, can see um, why. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. So definitely, I do love to write a lot more of short kind of poems, short aphorism or mm-hmm. pieces of writing like that to begin with. Recently, I have signed up for some Skillshare courses on writing. So I just recently I thought about writing as well, and I I do like to publish my own book one day. I'm not sure what it is going to be about. Maybe it's just about spiritual practices my own experience, something that really personal to me, then I can share with the world that would be beautiful. I think you will. Yeah. I think there's more. I think there's a lot more. And obviously, you know, I'm a I'm I'm a firm believer that we don't have to show everything to everybody. You know, as Mm. a therapist, I I'm quite private person. You know, I don't show my family or anything on Instagram or anything. I think we have to keep things to ourselves. Um, Mm -hmm. It protects our energy. We don't have to show everything to people we don't know. People don't know us. Um, But writing, I think, is an outlet for a lot of people. And when I was reading your blog, I thought, yes, you share a lot. You share your art, your creativity, which comes from within you. You're sharing Mm -hmm. your thoughts. And maybe a book might be there but I can't the more I speak to you and I wrote it that I thought I must ask her about this because your writing's very good so oh, thank you. so it's good to hear that we may get something in the form of a book or something from you <laughs> at some point in the future yeah. that would be lovely yeah, yeah thank you so much yeah right now will be many more coloring books that for sure perfect <laughs> we can we can use yeah. more those as well that is perfect so we're just finishing up and coming to the end. But Sierra, two quick questions. What makes your heart sing? What makes your heart sing? What makes my heart sing usually um, the kindness of people around me, sometimes the strangers on the street. That's, yeah, that's something that's really beautiful and I would cry. It's, you know, it's a simple uh, act of kindness somewhere that I see it's just beautiful I want more of that yes more of that please absolutely so what we do at the end I pick from a bowl of questions 
right? I call it, a, we, I, there's an old saying, put a fork in it when it's done, <laughs> put a fork in it. But this is far out random Q questions. So I've got a little bowl here. So I'm just going to randomly pick. It, it really is random. So yeah, it's very, very <laughs> random question. I like just wouldn't think of. So don't worry, yeah. it's nothing big or anything. Okay, I've got one. Um, okay, so what, <laughs> this is very random. What is something that you own that you've never, ever used? Oh, you know what? I do have a few things like that. <laughs> I think that I, I do have quite a few things like that. Unfortunately, even I love being a minimalist and I try being a minimalist many, many times, many years in my life, but I, I always do have something that I never use. One of the things is my high heels. I have a beautiful, these beautiful high heels I bought from Bangkok. They are very beautiful and they were, they were not very cheap actually. Uh, but the thing is, they wasn't the most comfortable pair to, to wear. So I ended up didn't wear them at all. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was a bit of waste of money and, and waste of space in my house, but anyway. <laughs> It happens. It happens. All right. I, yeah. When, when I look good. at them, I, I do get I do get some joy out of it. So exactly. <laughs> there we go. But at least they're yeah. there and they sound lovely. <laughs> yeah. Wait, do do you have anything like that? I'm sure I have loads, but I <laughs> but I just did a big um clear out. So the beginning of oh. every year I do a re huge recycling. I get rid of loads of stuff and I'm I've just done that. So I literally got rid of boxes and boxes of stuff I wasn't using. <laughs> so it feels yeah. so good as well. It just feels That's so right. good to get it out. Um, yeah. So no, I haven't got lots now. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so <laughs> good. It all going. Yeah, I haven't got anything I'm not using right now. I'm sure I could find something. <laughs> Sierra, thank you so oh. much for your time today I have to say I've learned a lot from this interview and there's lots of things I'm going to take on board um, things like the creative block it's something I hadn't thought about before um, also about the mind body spirit connection I work in in that field but you know it's nice to hear from like-minded people about their thoughts because it opens up my mind for other things as well. I do need to ask you about your tarot. Are you going to do an Oracle deck? I wanted oh, to. Yes. Quickly, yeah, it was in my notes. That's Can you right. That's... Quickly. Yes, yes. So, so the Oracle deck, I already completed all the illustrations in this deck. Uh, I work with a um, kind of well known tarot author in New Zealand. She's based in Wellington. Her name is Sam um, Mudio. She's an amazing, amazing, beautiful person as well so i work with her on this oracle deck and the name of the deck is vision oracle it will be published i think not sure yet this year sometime it's okay. already in in the printing process so it will be out <laughs> okay brilliant i'm so excited for that because your art oh, along with yeah. oracle is a perfect combination so well done for doing that can't wait cannot wait for that your art is amazing. So thank you. And have a lovely rest of the day. And oh, you too. I will see you soon. <laughs> you know, I'll see you next time. And yeah, have a good night. I you know your evening in your time zone. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining me today. Be sure to follow on all podcast platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. Also, check all social media, especially the Facebook page, as there will be new topics listed and new guests. And also Twitter will always have the new and upcoming episodes. But make sure you subscribe so that you never miss an episode. See you soon.